AMD's massive gains in the consumer side of things with Ryzen is most certainly not going to stop over there because they are translating all of that power that they've managed to squeeze out of Ryzen to the Epic series of processors, this being the third generation Milan series of processors, and it sure looks that they're getting ready to absolutely stomp Intel at this point, and we're going to be talking about that. But before, if you'd like to keep yourself up to date with the latest news in tech and gaming, then do make sure you get subscribed to this channel because I happen to talk quite often about it. At this point, I think I'm doing daily videos talking about it. So if you happen to like those things, then get subscribed. And let's talk about the Epic series of processors, those being, of course, Epic Milan, because we've gotten a leak talking about some benchmarks ahead of the Q1 launch, showing that AMD is also preparing to launch a monstrous six processors uh, with up to 64 cores, a 4 gigahertz boost clock, and a 208, 280 watt TDP. Of course, this differs um, depending on which processor you're looking at, and we're going to get into that as well. I'm going to have a table. But it's sure impressive to hear that the CPU is going to require a or is going to have a TDP of 280 watts, which is <laughs> higher than what the RTX 3070 in my system has. But it's surprisingly not a lot more than what the upcoming Intel 11900K is going to require to power it, especially if you want to get that massive boost that uh, is allegedly going to be able to hit and more on that in this video as well. But now let's look at the Epic series of processors, namely the 7663, which is going to have a, uh, which is going to have 64 cores and 128 threads with a huge 256 megabytes of L3 cache and 32 megabytes of L2 cache. With that huge number of cores, we're not expecting to see an insane boost frequency, and, but that's normally what happens with AMD to be fair. But this chip will have a base clock of 2.45 gigahertz and a boost of 3.5 gigahertz which should squeeze every little bit of performance out of this chip and bring you a lot more well better experiences in um, all of the workstation and productivity tools that you are using so if you're interested then make sure you keep an eye out on those so we've also seen that the overall improvement is about 10 to 15 percent and the average is about 14 percent and this is due to the whole ipc improvement that amd has managed to uh, bring to those chips and of course with ryzen we've seen a 19 percent ipc improvement and this has been great because the well, the now launched or paper launch, let's say, because you can't really find them in stock, the um, Ryzen 5000 chips have absolutely crushed Intel, even in gaming where they were the absolute kings in this sense. And I would be curious to see if AMD is going to manage to completely crush, like I was saying, or stomp Intel with their upcoming third uh, generation Epic Milan processors, and they would get the absolute Epic win. But don't forget that AMD has already managed to beat, um, to beat Intel in the um, workstation and server side of things, even with their Threadripper CPU, the 3990X has managed to score even better than their Xeon chips. And I don't remember exactly the name, but you're most probably going to be able to see it on screen right now. And AMD's Epic 7713 is about 20% faster than Intel's Xeon offering. Uh, and if you're Intel right now, it sure seems to be really scary and I've been talking about this in my videos already. I think all of my videos where I'm talking about AMD and Intel, I kind of have to use this phrase because they're still stuck on 14 nanometer even with their upcoming um, 11th gen processors, Rocket Lake, that we're going to be talking about right now. And remember when I said that you're going to require a beefy cooler to run this chip, especially if you want to get that massive 5.3 gigahertz boost on this chip, well, it most certainly looks like that. This furnace of a CPU with a TDP of up to 250 watts is only going to have a measly 8 cores and 16 threads with a boost of 5.3 gigahertz, as I've already mentioned. And of course, this is Intel's flagship CPU, which is going to go head to head against AMD's 5950X. But I'm not sure what they're going to be able to do in terms of performance, but we're going to get into that a little bit later, perhaps in another video. Their new Cypress Core Cobs, which kind of remind me of Cypress Hill and I can't possibly imagine why, are going to theoretically squeeze every little bit of performance out of the silicon that they're using and you should expect to see a boost of 4.8 gigahertz all core and yes I did mention the 5.2 or 5.3 gigahertz 
boost but this is of course not all core this is only for a single core but as it is the case you might be able to get it to 5.21 far or 5.3 uh, all core but for that you're going to need a a really good cooler and b you're going to also have to be one of the lucky winners in the silicon lottery as it happens most of the time with those high-end cpus so don't expect you'll be able to do that out of the box the 250 watt TDP will of course only be hit if you reach that massive boost but even so this still makes it one of the most power hungry CPUs and I reckon this might also be to the fact that Intel is still stuck on 14 nanometer and what are you doing? It's, it's time to move on <laughs> Intel at this point. And the same story kind of repeats itself for the 11700K and the 11600K where the 11700K will have 8 cores and 16 threads and will boost to 4.6 GHz with some being able to do 5 GHz and even here we're expecting to see a 225 to 250 watt TDP and it certainly might be easier to cool the 11600K but even in this case it still begs the question do you even want to go with such a CPU? Because of course this is going to go head to head against the 5600X from AMD, but that one is not requiring that you get an insane cooler to be able to use it at those high frequencies. And of course, AMD, it doesn't have the very same high frequencies that Intel does, and it might help you in gaming, but looking at the performance that the 5600X and all of the other processors that AMD has released, it kind of doesn't make sense for me especially to go with Intel with their new generation. So let me know what you think in the comments down below and let's talk further about what Intel is also going to release next year. And this is going to be the 11400. Of course this is a non-gay variance and it still kind of bothers me that you know, in the year 2020, we're almost in 2021 depending on when you're watching this video, we're still stuck with non-overclockable processors. Whereas with AMD, you can still get, um, I believe even the 3400G, you can overclock that CPU. So come on Intel, it's, it, it's time to move on. And also it's time to enable your other lower end motherboards to be, you know, offering those features that AMD is also offering because I'm not only talking about overclocking, it's of course, also a PCIe Gen 4, which is only now coming to Intel with their next generation. And it also seems that you need to change the motherboard to a 500 series because either you get an H, I believe, so the Z590, I believe they're going to be called, or H or B series, whatever they're going to come out. It's, it's a complete mess. Even as someone who is really interested in technology, I still find it a little bit hard to follow all of the naming schemes, all of the things that you're coming out at this point and it sure makes it even more confusing for someone who is not up to date with all of those things. But sticking with the 11400, you can see that this one still has six cores and 12 threads, which don't get me wrong, it's a good thing, but it's surprising that Intel is not going over eight cores like I've mentioned with the other CPU, but thanks, it's still a good thing because a lot of games are now starting to be using all of those extra cores being 6, being 8, being more and we've even seen that with Cyberpunk 2077 where the game really has a sweet spot at 8 cores but of course 6 cores is also really good and I'm most probably going to be linking some of those things in the video description as well and you can see the benchmarks they've already done with the 8700K on my channel. Now with the 11400 you're going to get a um, single core boost of 4.4 gigahertz and the old core boost is about 4.2 gigahertz if I remember correctly and of course you're going to be able to well you might be able to get to that 4.4 gigahertz boost easier um, with this one because it's not all that much and the base TDP for this one is 65 watts so Thanks. And this one is going to go head to head against the 5600 non experience, I would expect, because the 5600X, of course, might be a little bit better than what they have to offer. And of course, that one can also overclock. And speaking of the 5600 non experience, I'm sure that AMD is going to release it uh, maybe sometime next year, early 
January, February, it really depends at this point because of course they're also having a lot of issues trying to get all of those chips out to people because they're working with TSMC and TSMC is working with Apple, with AMD and by extension Sony and Microsoft and the whole distribution and everything that's going on is completely bonkers at the moment but of course not trying to derail all of those things I just want to say that Intel really needs to get all of their stuff together if they want to be the next well you know same the next CPU that you're going to be using in your system because that's what I want to learn from you guys today if you would have the money right now and you would be desperate for an upgrade and assuming that all of those things would be in stock right now including the 5000 series of CPUs from AMD what would you choose because in my case and I'm not trying to influence you in any way but even with my 8700k assuming that I would need to upgrade to a new CPU and build a new PC I would most certainly go with with AMD and I would most certainly go with a 5950X because so far the CPU has shown that it's really good performance including even for the price that it's going at at the moment. So yeah, I would really like to have a whole discussion with you in the comments. Um, so if you don't have anything better to do on your Sunday, <laughs> assuming it's Sunday when you're watching this thing, then let's go and talk about those things because I'd be interested in your guys' uh, opinion like I was saying. And of course, if you'd like to keep yourself up to date with the latest news in tech and gaming, as I was saying, do make sure to get subscribed to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.